Advent of Code 2024, day six, guard gallivant. Let's take a look. Um, I'm going to get a grid here like this, and uh, it's got obstructions, which are the pound sign, hash signs, and uh, it's got a guard who I believe is always facing up um, to start. And basically the guard is going to walk up until they run into camp. They can't go into the obstruction, so then they turn right, they walk till they run into an obstruction, they turn down, they walk till they're, they, they're going to keep turning right 90 degrees, which effectively is like here, over here, up to here, over to here, down to here, over to here, here to here, and then off the map right here. Um, and so you can sort of see they trace through these obstructions. Um, and basically I need to count up all the places that they visited. So here you can see they put an X on every space that the guard stepped, uh, and that's 41 distinct places. And so it doesn't matter that they came through the same space multiple times in different directions, just did they go in the space or not? Um, that's the puzzle. Um, we'll start with Gen Day. Um, I've got I'll, I'll link to the intro video where I show where I talk a little bit about this. Um, but uh, basically, it's going to pull my input and create me a stub. Uh, I should grab the it's not that one. Let's see where's my initial one here with them facing up and ex.txt. Boom. Okay. Uh, the input is not not surprisingly is much bigger. Uh, do we have a do we have a guard in here somewhere? Yep, there's our guard. Uh, would not be fun to manually go through this. Um, looks like what do we have? 130, 130 rows at least. So okay. Um, strategy wise, I think there's probably we're we're gonna go through this and just sort of actually walk it. I think there's probably an algorithm to do this more efficiently. Um, like something where from a spot, instead of stepping a spot at a time, we could probably like find the next, just find the next, um, go in, go in some direction. Yeah, that's kind of stepping a spot at a time. I don't know. There's probably a more efficient way, but I think at least for part one, I have pretty high confidence we can do this with just a brute force, like step, step, step and walk, walk the maze. Uh, who knows if that's going to put us in a bad spot for part two, but we'll give it a shot. Um, my input stub here is already going to work. We're going to read in, um, we're going to remove new lines to get each line and that should be fine. And then we will see, um, I'm going to go ahead and say like num rows equals len lines and num calls equals len lines zero. So now that we have those to use them, first thing we need to do is find where our starting point is. So we'll say for, uh, actually, we're gonna have a double loop, so let's just create a function. Um, def get start for r in no, uh, range num. Uh, actually, I like it. let's see for r comma row in enumerate lines for c comma val in enumerate row if val equals up return r comma c there we go now we got to get started so we'll say um r comma c equals and uh get start like that um we'll say dr dc is equal to and now we're going up so our dr uh, that's probably easier to look at the example our dr is going to be negative one we're going up in the rows and our dc is going to be zero to start. Uh, so D is negative one zero. Um, and we'll need a visited equals set. Cool. All right, now uh, we will while true. Um, and we can I know down here we can do uh, we, we can just get rid of part well part one, we can say this equals len if I can type uh, vi wow visited. Okay, so Walter, what are we going to do? We are going to say visited dot add r comma c. So we're going to add our point to the visit, starting with our start point. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to check our next spot. So we say uh, if so, then we, I guess we can just say r uh, comma c equals r plus dr c plus dc. We move to uh, we check the next. Oh, we probably don't want to do. We don't want to do that yet. Um, we want to say if um, dr uh, r plus dr 
uh, okay, we, we need to check if we go up the map, right? So if that is less than zero, or I guess the easiest way to do this is if not uh, r a zero is less than or equal to r plus dr is less than rows, and zero is less than or equal to c plus dc is less than calls. So that means this is basically says, uh, oh, it should be num rows, shouldn't it? Let's see, num rows and num calls. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to say, this means I'm in a valid space. So if I'm not in a valid space, I've walked off the map, I'm done. So this will be a break. Now I leave the loop. Uh, and that's, that's, that's what we need to, that means we've successfully ended. So the next thing we need to do is say, um, if, uh, let's see, our uh, lines, I should probably name this something better. Let's, let's rename this, uh, rename symbol grid. If grid of R plus DR, C plus DC uh, equals pound sign, then we're going to, I'm just going to say turn, we'll come back and do that in a second, else R comma C equals R plus, I guess we can just do R plus equals DR, C plus equals DC. Uh, well, DC. So basically, if we, if the next space is a thing, we're going to turn, which we haven't done yet. And if the next, oh, otherwise we're going to step, step in that direction. And then we just loop. Um, how do we turn? So let's go to our input here. Right now, anytime we're going up, uh, we'll go down here, if we're going up, we're going to be minus one comma zero. Uh, when we turn right, we're, the next one is going to be, uh, we're going to be going right. So we're going to be going zero comma one. Then we're going to be going, the next time we're going to be going one comma zero and the next time we're going to be going uh zero comma negative one what we're basically doing is we're saying this one um dr which is this one be uh, dr which is this one becomes dc um it's just every time it becomes dc so this this becomes the zero uh this one becomes this one this zero becomes this zero and then this negative one becomes a negative one. DC, which is right here, becomes negative dr. And this one here, you know, just negative zero, zero. This one here. So, so effectively, it's pretty easy, actually. We can just say uh, turning is really just to say the, uh, uh, DC dr is equal to the uh, negative dr dc. And so that is effectively a right turn, and that'll work for us. Um, we might be done. Do Python day one example of text forty one. What was the example? That sounds about right. Sounds. Let's see. Yeah, forty one. Okay, let's go back and do a try here. Um, I think this should be pretty. I think this should be pretty fast. Yeah, it does fifty one forty five. Awesome. Go check out part two. Okay, so for part two, we've decided we can't wait for the guard to walk off the map. Instead, we want to place one obstruction in such a way so that the guard gets stuck in a loop, and we know where the loop is, and therefore we can sneak around. I don't know. This story doesn't make too much sense, but we're going to go with it. Um, and so the question is, so I guess you can see, they put this obstruction here. The guard hits this loop and then just loops forever. Um, there's other places. They can put an obstruction here. Um, they can put an obstruction here. So basically, there's a lot of places with the obstruction. In fact, there are six different places in the example that they can put an instruction. Um, it's probably much higher in ours. The question is how many obstructions? Can we, how many different places could we put an obstruction? Um, this is where, this is where doing this part one smarter could benefit us. Um, and really there's two ways I could think of that we could be more efficient with this. Um, first, if we, there might be some way to look for patterns in here, like where you find three corners of a square and just figure out how to get yourself into it and so you can sort of just look across the grid once and figure out where the patterns are that we could find um not only do we have to find the pattern of a block box but we have to then find the make sure that the guard gets into that pattern like steps in in the right direction um into those spaces i think i think it's very complicated we could try that um i might if i think of something awesome i'll certainly post it 
Um, but we're going to skip that for now. We could also try just like, what if we put an obstruction in 0, 0? What about 0, 1? What about 0, 2? And just like run the whole thing over again. Um, this is where if our part one was less brute forcey, if we had a more creative solution where we just sort of could see ahead, maybe that would go faster. Um, and that's where I'm going to try if just straight up taking what I did in part one doesn't work. But we're going to first start with what we did in part one. Um, so I think I've, I thought about this a little bit while, while I was paused reading. This loop is going to be almost the same, but it's going to be slightly different enough that it's going to be, I think, not worth it trying to convert this into a loop like that works for both. So I'm going to just create new code down here. Um, and first thing I'm going to do is create a function. And I'm going to say, like, check for the loop. And that is going to be my function. Um, I'm, going to I'm going to kind of messily handle global variable, like working off like the global grid and things, because it just feels... At, cause I'll, it, it's not great coding practice, but for an admin of code challenge, it's fine. Um, so what are we going to do in this loop? Um, we are going to basically do this. Um, let's see, give me some, some tabbing here. Uh, we don't want to do get start every time. So I'm going to say start r start c equals get start. Ooh, I don't know why that was so hard. Um, and then I can just say r.c equals start r comma start c. Um, we'll start at that point. We'll set our visited set to empty. Um, we will walk. Now, the way we're going to tell if we have hit a loop, if you hit a loop, it means you're in the same spot you were in before and you're in the same, you're going the same direction. So before we could cross our paths. But if we ever, if you ever hit the same spot in the same direction, you're going to, you're in, by definition in a loop. So when we add to our state here, we're going to do drdc. We're going to include those. And so up here, we can start by saying, if uh, rc drdc in visited, we are going to we are in a loop. So we will return true. Otherwise, we add that space to our state. We are going to check to see if we're off. And we're not going to break here, because if we've left the board, we are not in a loop. By definition, we've left. So we will return false. Otherwise, we're going to walk just like we did before, and we basically are, that, that's our function. Um, so this check for loop will tell us if our current grid is a loop. So now what we want to do is walk over, um, so for, how do we want to call this, like, uh, row object in len, uh, oh, in num rows for the column object in um, calls. And what we do, we're basically just going to update the grid. Now we can't quite update the grid as we have right now. So what we, what we're, oh, so what our plan is going to be, is going to be to say grid sub RO sub C. Oh, well, first we need to check. If grid sub RO sub CO is not equal to a dot because it's if it's a if it's already an obstruction we can't add an obstruction if it's the starting place it, it explicitly said in the instructions we can't add on the starting place so it, that's not we can't do that so if it's not a dot we're going to continue just go to the next space then we will say grid and this is the part that's going to fail but we'll come back and fix that uh is equal to this then we're going to say if uh check for loop if that returns true we're going to add i guess we need to we need a part two counter here, part two equals zero. And now we can say part two plus equals one. We'll get rid of you. And that is, oh, and then we have to afterwards, regardless, we're going to set our grid R O C O equal to dot. And that'll be our loop. We'll just change the grid. Now this is going to fail, I'm pretty sure, because we have strings in here and it's strings are mutable. Yeah, we can't. Uh, int object is not mutable. That's even weirder. That's not what I expected. Um, because, of course, I did my loop. This is a range. I, the, the like dumbest newbie mistake that I make all the time uh, is always forgetting to do that in a loop. Um, cool. So now we have the problem where we have our grid is currently a list of strings. And those strings are immutable in Python. You can't just change a character in a string. So to do fix that, we are going to, and I'm going to have to play with this for a second. Um, there's probably a better way. I, this is probably like a nice way to do this. Well, let's see. If we do this map object is returning the stripped lines. If we do a map of lists 
onto it, we should turn those strings into, I did not mean to do, let's see, list like that. Now we turn those strings into lists. I think this will work just fine. Um, it did, and not only did it work just fine, it gave us the right answer. Now, for the example one, it was very fast. Um, let's let's try this. I'm gonna let it run. Uh, let's even for sake of, we'll do time here, and I'm gonna let this run for like a minute or two. I'll probably pause this video. Um, if it is not, I mean, this is one of those things where like, coming up with the more elegant solution would certainly be better, especially if this was like something that I was going to run in prod serving something up. Um, if I'm trying, oh, that was, 17 seconds is not that long. Um, I was going to say, if this is something I'm just trying to solve, like I could spend another hour trying to come up with a more elegant solution, but if I can wait two minutes, like that's, that's faster for challenge purposes. Um, I guess we have to check and see if it's right. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Boom. All right. 17 seconds is not bad at all. And we got a gold star. So, um, we are going to get to the point in that bit of code where I can't just brute force things anymore, where like the part one solve is going to be fine to take the intuitive, straightforward approach. But then when you get to part two, you hit like the, it's going to run for hours mode. Um, but day six, we're not there yet. So, um, that's it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll talk, uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.